many exciting things going on in MPNs. Perhaps I'll break it down a bit by disease area to, to make it a little more, more logical. So first, with the central thrombocythemia, although our standards include hydroxyurea, anagrolide, uh, and people have used pegylated interferon off-label, there is now a new phase three study that's accruing, led by Dr. Vrchavchuk and I, which is ropegylated interferon alpha versus anagrolide as second line for patients with ET. So no data at EHA, but that's up and coming. Uh, additionally, there is a drug that we'll talk about in a moment from Imago IMG7289 that's in second line ET studies, both at my center as well as a company led study. Next, let's switch over to polycythemia vera, where there's an important late breaking abstract from our colleagues, uh, Tiziano Barbui and colleagues of ropegulated interferon, that same one I had mentioned with ET. Uh, uh, compared to phlebotomy alone in low-risk patients with PV. Now, this is an ongoing study, but they seem to show quite a bit of superiority with a more even control, even in lower-risk patients, with steady control of their hematocrit, potential improvement in symptoms, control of white count, control of uh, leukocytosis, thrombocytosis, compared to phlebotomy alone. Uh, I long have felt that phlebotomy and aspirin alone leaves most patients with P. vera with relatively inadequate therapy. Y yes, it's, it's uh, easy, it's inexpensive, but, but it, it's truly the very definition of, of an antiquated therapy. I mean, that we've been bleeding patients for illnesses since the beginning of time. Uh, you know, so uh, I think an exciting study to, to show how that uh, steady control uh, might be beneficial. Additionally, in this space, there's hepcidin mimetics that are being developed. We don't have data at this EHA yet, but we likely will be soon. There's an exciting drug from Protagonist that may be trying to additionally make individuals phlebotomy independent uh, by uh, giving them a hepcidin mimetic. Uh, then the majority of drugs are still being developed primarily in myelofibrosis. So first, let's get around, well, what about in the frontline setting? So there's a drug that has several abstracts at EHA, uh, and that's the BEP inhibitor from Constellation Pharmaceuticals, CIP0610. And there is a, both a trial looking at it in combination with ruxolitinib in the frontline setting, where they see some pretty ex uh, impressive responses in terms of splenomegaly and symptoms, potentially even in terms of fibrosis and anemia. Uh, that will be uh, validated in a much larger forthcoming phase three study. But that's the main kind of frontline uh, study that's being looked at. There are many drugs in the second line that are really quite interesting. The IMG7289, which is an LSD1 inhibitor that I mentioned in ET, it's active in myelofibrosis. There's a nice abstract from Kristen Pettit in the University of Michigan and colleagues regarding that agent. There is the MDM2 inhibitor from Cartos uh, in the second line setting in myelofibrosis, clearly active. MDM2 inhibitors have activities both in PV and MF. There have been some issues with tolerability with this drug. I myself uh, am interested to continue to see the evolving data from this study. There is a combination of a PI3 kinase inhibitor with ruxolitinib. Uh, it's been speculated for a long time that PI3 kinase inhibition may have a real benefit uh, when combined with ruxolitinib, and there is uh, one that's being presented from our colleagues uh, in at Kansas and colleagues, uh, Abe Yacoub, uh, showing good activity. There is the agent uh, approved for B BPCDN uh, from uh, Naveen Pemaraju, uh, Tegra Tegraxafusp. Uh, it's a tough Tough word, uh, again, working at uh, some of the cellular and uh, microenvironment uh, infrastructure related in myeloid disorders may be active in CMML, uh, and they are showing activity in myelofibrosis, and Dr. Primaraju gives an update uh, on the uh, longer-term experience with that group. There is two other arms of the CPI-0610, uh, both in second line or adding a combination in partial responders. Uh, both with, with very solid data, so it's a drug with uh, a lot of different activities. Uh, 
Uh, and then uh, finally, Navitaclax uh, has Clear Activity, uh, and this is an abstract that I was involved with, led by Claire Harrison, of the combination of Navitaclax uh, with bruxolitinib, uh, showing uh, activity in kind of partial responders. So in MF, you could think of combination as frontline, combination in terms of uh, partial responders, but staying on ruxolitinib, or truly fully second line therapies that are being uh, experimented with. Indeed, an exciting time at EHA, uh, there is even an abstract that we uh, presented related to uh, uh, health disparities and uh, minority patients with MPNs. Uh, this is data from the My MPN Registry that Dr. Sherber and I and other colleagues had done along with the MPN Research Foundation. Uh, we're particularly mindful given the environment that we're in uh, and as we all truly uh, understand and recognize the importance of celebrating diversity within our society, we, re uh, we realize that you know, many of the core data that we have uh, in MPNs uh, is, is almost exclusively uh, Caucasian or uh, European or North American in origin. So we look to uh, further enhance that uh, data set to truly understand the, the full implications of the disease.